how to make Japanese tabir, the socks you wear with Zodi and Geta, is one of the questions I receive with the most. And Annabelle is hosting a stockings exchange video where a few costumers on YouTube and I make stockings for each other. I thought it's the perfect opportunity to finally look into how tabi are actually constructed and made. In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. And keep in mind, as a kimono teacher, you're not sewing kimono. You're usually only the person who educates people and show them how to properly wear a kimono and how to properly tie different obi styles. And that itself makes already 50% out of your kimono outfit because kimono is an open garment and you will probably have to put it on and adjust it to your body so it will properly fit. So this is nothing you can kind of come up with by yourself. You have to properly learn it. So how to make footwear is not necessarily part of the curriculum to become a kimono teacher. And that is why this video is just perfect because I'm just gonna make a big tubby that could be basically stocking and I can just look into the construction of how it is made. This is a kimono channel so I want to make a Japanese inspired stocking and when we talk about this I mean it's tabi, right? Since I can't make tabi or like making footwear in general is nothing I'm super familiar with, I thought let's have some fun and take apart some old tubby of mine because all of my tubby are bespoke. They're all tailored to my actual feet size or foot size. So I don't wear any of the mass produced ones anymore that I have bought earlier on in my kimono journey. By the way, you will get a video about tubby, hopefully next year in spring. Where I'm getting my tubby from is a good friend of mine. So we, were pl we are planning on a video together. So let's take this apart and see how tabi are constructed. By the way, you can see here the bottom is quite dirty, but what I actually want to talk about is this surface here that you have on the bottom. It's a really, really stiff cotton when you can see. Can you see this? I hope you can see this. When you try to fold it, it's like it's so stiff that it really it makes waves like from the side. And this is actually supporting your feet. That is why I would not recommend any tubby socks or like stretch tubby socks or however they're called. They're so uncomfortable. When you wear a zodi or getta, your heels are supposed to peek over the heel of the zodi. And there is not a specific amount of how much, it depends rather how much you can deal with and what you're still comfortable with. I can go really small with my Zodi, by the way. It's also because I always have really nice tabi that support my feet in a way that I need. So I'm gonna turn it inside out and I'm gonna start with taking the bottom of the tabi apart first. Yeah, look, this is how it looks like on the inside. Really tiny seam allowance, let me measure. Yeah, it's a five millimeter seam allowance and it's like fixed together again with a zigzag stitch here at the edge. I, by the way, have a really bad posture day today. <laughs> I fixed my posture already a few times during lessons I did this morning. Okay, I will do that. I'm going to check in with you later. Yeah. Okay, so this is the bottom. This is now the top here. You can see here at the toe, it was really delicately gathered, delicately gathered together. And here too. So this is definitely probably the tough part when making Zodi, uh, sorry, Tavi. <laughs> anyway, I know that this here is made of four pieces because every Tavi have lining. Then like, can you see this here? Hope you can see this. Like here where the Kohase, Kohase is like this name here of this tiny spatula or tiny plate here that you hook onto the 
uh, string here on the other side. So on this side here, the two parts here, they're sewed together in a circle here at the bottom. This is obviously done before doing, uh, before putting on the bottom. Yeah, remove the first kohase. That's how they're looking like. I also want to keep them because when I one day make my own tabby, I will need them. Oh, finally. They sewed it first, all the layers here. At the center, they did a yotsunui. Obviously, yotsunui is a Japanese sewing term that I don't really know how it's called in English because I've looked it up in several dictionaries and it's not popping up. So they put the four layers together. So you have outer layer, outer layer, outer layer, lining, lining like so. They put it together like so. All the four of them stacked up here along this line and then they're gonna sew until where the toe is gonna split. So this is one seam. This is a yotsunui, all the four layers sewed at once. Okay, we have the outer layers, left and right, of course. And we have the two identical lining pieces. Again, left and right. And then, I hope this is a home frame. And then of course we have the bottom. These are all the parts of a tubby. I am going to iron this now. I'm gonna press all the seams properly open and I'm gonna go to the PC and I'm going to scan every single piece of it and I'm gonna make a digital pattern out of it. I'm planning to, by the way, put this pattern onto my Patreon. Keep in mind that this is probably not tubby that fit your feet because these tubby were actually also too small for my feet but in case you are a rather advanced pattern adjuster <laughs> which means you actually can adjust pattern to your size so they fit you can download this pattern and probably play a tiny bit with it and then make tubby that fit your feet okay so we have the pattern already printed out and i have three pieces i have the bottom piece then I have one side piece that I think is the side of the big toe and the other side piece that I believe is the side of the four toes <laughs> right now I'm just utterly confused like seriously I should have marked out stuff on these I didn't think this far I should have kind of marked out where specific stuff meets because now I have like zero markings on this and I will have no idea where to place what and where actually the heel is and stuff like that. So this is gonna be just really interesting. <laughs> anyway, I want to show you the fabric I have purchased. So I have purchased this fabric here for the lining. It's a cute, nice dot fabric that I think matched with the color of the main fabric. This is gonna be my outer fabric. And I chose uh, this one because it has hedgehogs on it. And that's the only reason. Because you know that my pet is a hedgehog. So I thought it's gonna be on brand when there is a hedgehog on it. And I probably never saw a hedgehog on a Christmas fabric. I also made the pattern really, really big. As you can see, it's gonna be a really huge stocking. So I will seriously start putting this on the fabric and then cutting it out. And this is gonna be a annoying, process because I will have to seriously think. In the first round of cutting out I actually marked out and cut and the second round was just keeping the pattern on as it is and then cutting out. I don't know which method I like more to be honest. I don't like to work with patterns in general because when you watch my video of how to make a video uh, kimono you should know that in kimono sewing you actually don't work with patterns so not working with pattern is for me the way more natural so what i did cut out is the big part here 
this is the big part with the three toes in the end this has to be the front and the lining of course is then the other side because when you put it together you don't have a proper back and front yay so this is number one and number two i cut out was this this was perfect as it was with this being the front actually at least one thing i have done right <laughs> and of course i cut this out as the front and then i turn the pattern like so to cut also out the lining so when you put it together you have a proper front and back it's already turning into tummy <laughs> okay my next step is going to be i'm going to sew all these layers together um i'm gonna start sewing here and i'm gonna sew until the top that's the first i'm gonna do you start with pinning on three layers first outer layer and lining of the four toe side as well as the lining of the big toe side you have to stretch the big toe side lining so the top corners are matching up that can be a little tricky but the fabric is on the bias so this shouldn't be too much of an issue then you turn it and pin on the other layer of the big toe side again stretching it so the bottom and top corners are matching up When it's finished, it should look like this and it's ready to be sewed. My machine struggled a tiny bit with this, so I did a second row of stitching. So what I'm gonna do now is I will have to turn the two lining and outside layers right side on right side and I will pin them together just like this and when I do this because there are the other layers already involved I'm trying to get them kind of out of the way um, worst case I think I'm gonna snip this but we'll see how far I can go after sewing one side I pinned down the two layers lining and fashion fabric together and sew this too. I also sewed the sides together down to the sole. Again, only each side, fashion fabric and lining, right side on right side. So I clipped all the corners as you can see because this makes a better outcome the original was not clipped at all but i'm not a professional tubby maker so clipping it was definitely for me the better idea to have a really nice corner on every end okay oh my gosh it looks already so much like what i had yesterday when i pulled it apart do you remember this do you remember this this is how it looked like so amazing oh, it's coming together <laughs> last but not least what i'm probably gonna do today is you probably remember the tiny circle of course i marked it out on my pattern here and i won't do a circle because i'm not that skilled with the sewing machine that i could make a nice and tiny even circle but i have cut a slit into all the parts here you can see this here I've cut a slit in here. I will now just find these circles here on the bottom and gonna put them together. All four layers again to let them meet like so. And I'm gonna pin this together and I will have to find out how I want to sew this. Wait, which side is on top? Oh, I made a mistake. This is gonna get in here and it's gonna be straight in the end because the kuhase are sewed onto here. Uh, okay. 
you know what I'm gonna continue tomorrow and I'm gonna think about how I will change this because I'm not gonna do Kose I'm not gonna do the metal spatula I'm actually thinking about doing buttons which means I will need this part at all which means I will just have to cut this away in a straight line <sighs> okay let's fix this but I will check in with you tomorrow kind of between lessons so excuse this outfit I've noticed that I've completely forgotten to put in some ribbon or something so you can actually hang it up so that is what I did and I put in the ribbon on the top of the two sides separately so they're gonna be tied up in a bow later together because there is no central back seam or heel seam so I had to be a tiny bit creative and then I got into the buttonholes and don't ask me how to do buttonholes because it's a new adventure for me too and I also finally after having this machine for like five years, I finally found out how to do buttonholes on the machine. And this is how they look like. I'm actually really, really happy how they turned out for the very first buttonholes I ever did. Really proud of myself. <laughs> With the ribbon here on top, I think it looks really, really cute. And what I also did is I cut out the bottom of the tabby and I put it onto some interfacing to make it stiffer because the actual bottom of tabby is quite stiff cotton fabric and I wanted to kind of um, imitate that. My interfacing that I have is not really really stiff and thick but I don't want to make it any thicker because I'm just really afraid my machine is not gonna be able to sew this amount of fabric and with the gathering so I'm just gonna uh, work with it as it is and see if my machine will be able to handle it. With the buttons, I wasn't quite sure what to do because I actually have these really, really cute buttons, but it didn't pop enough on the fabric. And I also asked my patrons on Patreon what they think about the buttons. And everyone said, go with four of these normal white ones. They look the best, so. That's what I will sew on now and then I will do a kimono lesson and then let's try to get onto attaching the sole and we're basically done. Much better. <laughs> I had some dinner and I got changed into more comfy clothes so now I can get full head started on sewing on the bottom. I have turned it inside out and I've also sewed a really delicate and tiny running stitch here along the edge so it can gather up uh, the top parts and make it fitting to the actual bottom and I have been looking onto different tubby that I have in my closet and some of them have heavier gathering on the bottom and some of them have have less gathering I guess this is just used to make it fit. What I'm doing now is just nicely spread the gathering where it's necessary so it's not too big, um, too big wrinkles. For me that was the only way I could come up with with how I should do this because I have absolutely no idea as you might recall. So I don't know if this is the right technique to do but it's actually looking quite good so far. I think I have finished pinning it on. This is how it looks like. So it looks like on the bottom. It's gonna be so hard to sew now. Wish me luck. <laughs> okay. Do I have hopes that this went well in the first time? No. But we're gonna <laughs> turn it around and see. Oh. Oh, okay, the front is weird as I thought, like the toe split is really, really wrinkly and weird, but oh my gosh, 
It's Tubby. <laughs> Look at them. They are proper Tubby. Especially like the heel area looks really like Tubby. It looks like Tubby. I gave my best to press it in the way that Tubby should be pressed because you actually want to have the sole completely lie flat and you have the top fabric going over the sole like this. So also when you have gathers, you try to keep the gathers on the bottom here so they're not popping up here on the front. I think I did it best here. Can you see this? I think I did it best here at the sole. When you look on the bottom, you can see it's quite wrinkly here and there, but on top it's just flat and nice. I noticed that I could just have cut this form here out of cardboard or like just a thicker paper and put it into the tubby and then iron over that. That would have been probably the smartest idea. <laughs> I would just remember this one for next time when I make more tubby because of course now when I make more tubby it was way too much fun. <laughs> when you're super perfectionist as I am, I also think that these wrinkles here on top will drive you slightly crazy, but it did take a closer look at tubby that I own and all of them have exactly the same wrinkles at the same spot, which means yes, tubby are obviously an easier construction and it has hasn't to be that super smooth in the end your feet are gonna fill in the wrinkles anyway so this is going to be fine when you want to get this pattern for the stockings as well as for the tubby socks in this specific size which is 24.5 in Japanese size I have it up on my patreon in case you watch this video when it comes out give me a few more days because Christmas is a really busy time for me I don't really know when I will have the time and make the changes that I want to make because working with this I found out my pattern is really hard to put together. I mean, I kind of winged it. So I will have to go over the pattern and make a few changes and then I will upload it. So last thing what we're gonna do is I want to stuff this and then I'm gonna send it up to Marie from Historical Bell. In case you haven't checked any one of the people out or you don't know anyone who's in this co collaboration, I really do recommend them, especially Annabelle. I watch all of her videos. I think she's really, really creative and the channel is fun, but also chaotic. And that's exactly what I love about people. <laughs> I hope you learned something new. I hope you had fun. If you want to see more content like this, feel free to tell me in the comments. And if you're new here and you want to learn more about kimono from a professional kimono teacher, feel free to subscribe. And I talk to you in my next kimono adventure. Bye.